Hi, my name is Phil Bank, author of the Codit Resources, and I just want to tell you about some new free programming that you can download and have a go at. So Codit Gold is a totally new concept. Um, every uh, module has different ways of teaching it that you can choose, and in fact, every time you teach something, you can teach it in a different way. Um, and we will go through some of those choices and show you some of those things uh, as well uh, in a little bit. Every project also has links to where something um, it exists in the everyday world. So if we're introducing sequence or repetition or selection, because that's needed for the project, then we go straight into actually showing you some of these ideas in the everyday world. Okay, so we've got everyday variables. There's a, a sample of everyday selection. <laughs> okay, uh, we're getting children to think about those things before we actually get into code so that they get a link to their existing knowledge. Um, we've also got some uh, role play and writing your own examples because we found that when children have a go at this and uh, build up a sort of understanding of these concepts outside of programming, they're much more likely to actually transfer these ideas between one programming language and another. There's some good evidence on that. So here's some of our count controlled work um, that you can work through for 10, 15 minutes before you get into some programming, which really helps children think about um, how these things are um, written, thought about outside of programming. Let's jump back into what you've actually got inside the modules. Now, our first module is called Build a Scene. And Build a Scene is a really simple module because I wanted to take some of the very simple ideas like sequence and repetition mostly and build up some of the new concepts so that teachers have never done these before would feel quite confident because the level of what they're using is quite simple. Um, all of the modules of work are written for both Scratch 2 and Scratch 3, so you can uh, jump in with that. And they, the, the earlier four out of the five are, are really quite simple as well. Um, um, there are some research call outs, so you can have a look and see what the research is like around these every time we use something. Um, and also, I've put an assessment for everything. I've used Kahoot, not because it's the best assessment ever, ever um, but because it's nice and quick and easy and, and that gives teachers uh, a chance to sort of do something. And also, it, it, if you want to, you can anonymize the results, take off the children's name, tell us which module you taught and email them back to code it. Uh, and then we can have a look at um, overall, you know, which which module Modules are developing children's short-term understanding uh, in terms of what what, a, what this type of test would tell us anyway. Um, so you know that'll be really useful. That gives us a little bit more knowledge, and then we can have a think about what we've learned from this. So let's take you back and have a little look at the sort of build a scene overview. Um, so here here are the sort of five modules that we're we're looking at. And let's just zoom in a little bit and have a little look at some of those. Um, so we've got a monologue and a dialogue. Um, those, you, you could do the monologue, uh, which is just a sequence of talking. Um, very simple, that's probably the easiest thing to do. You could do that very quickly and then go on to the dialogue, which is a little bit more complex. Or you could think, actually, Phil, we don't want to do the monologue, we go straight into a, into a dialogue. That's your choice, of course. Then we've got a, a module that's basically adding stage directions, sound, uh, making your character face right and face left and those sorts of things, which I just called stage and sound. We've got an animation module, which is about making your characters do things, nodding, waving, um, all sorts of fun things. And then probably our most difficult module is the personalizing, where we use a little variable just to change one small part of your monologue or dialogue. OK, let's have a look at some of the different sort of versions that we've created for a lot of these. So what is a Parsons problem first? Well, I'm just going to illustrate a Parsons problem by going and uh, popping up a bit of um, uh, scratch code. So what we've got here is the animation module. And you can see in this right hand panel that we've put some code together in here. This is the right code to build this, but there's no uh, it's not actually snapped together. So how would children do this sort of work? Well, what, they, what we'd be giving them 
is some of the algorithm beforehand so that they've got something to work from. So, of course, these are very similar to the type of algorithms you're writing uh, when they're doing their everyday algorithms. So we can see a sort of direct link to, to using some of those ideas. Um, so a child would have one of these and then they would be working on building uh, this so that they're, they're not only um, snapping them together and trying to work out the right order for them, but they're also having to interpret the algorithm as well. And you can see the ideas in there. So we give them a good example of one way you might plan something like this as well as part of this. So, th so that's a Parsons problem. Uh, let's just go back and, and have a look at some other ones. Um, a very popular one is the used, modify and create. So this is where we give children a piece of planning like this in here. Uh, and it's already been built and they have to run the code, see what it does. OK, in this case, doing a bit of a wave. OK, so that's the use bit. Um, and then the idea is to modify that to think about how what you could change and how would that change it? What would happen if I change these number of repeats to five? OK, uh, and, and what would what would be the, the outcome of that? What would happen if I took some of these blocks out and ran it with smaller amounts? What, what would happen? So it's all about modifying the project before you go and write and think about uh, planning your own. OK, so that's the use modify. Uh, which is a really nice method as well, really worth using. Now, Sue Sentence has come up with this lovely adaptation of Use Modify Create called Prim. And Prim is about predicting what you think the code is going to ha uh, happen straight away. So let's go and have a little look. So here we've got something where we're printing the code out. So we're not letting the children play with it straight away. And because it's related to the type of knowledge they've already worked on, so they've already hopefully done some, um, uh, here we go, concepts before coding. They've done some sort of um, everyday loops uh, in their work. Okay. Well, let's go back to it. So we do, we're predicting, we're thinking about what, um, what the code is going to do in this case. All right. And then after we predict, uh, the next element for that is uh, run the code. So we run it and we see what actually happens. Um, and then the next part after the running is the investigate. And investigate is a little more detailed than the use, modify, create. It's a little bit about thinking about uh, what can we find, OK, um, and uh, and also recording. It's really about sort of digging into the code and understanding it a little bit more, forcing children to think a little bit harder about it. OK, so there's, there's investigate um, and they've got to even write an algorithm as part of investigate. And we've been a, been a little bit more sort of um, uh, organized here for modify as well. So we're asking the children to think about what specific things can they modify? OK, so that's prim before, of course, the children go on and write their own algorithm and then turn that into their own code animations in this case. OK, let's go back to having a look at some other options. Um, we've also got some of the modeled offline um, aspects for some of these where we thought about how these work outside of code. OK, and you'll also notice a reverse com uh, completion one in here for the stage and sound. And this is where we've given the children fully the code, but we have only given them a part complete algorithm. So they have to go back and, uh, and uh, do that. You'll notice there's a completion task in here and a completion task. In this case, it's about um, uh, some of the code is already built and they've just got a few bits that they need to put in and add to that. Um, so. All of the, the work is, is, is on the website and uh, you can have a little look at it here. All the things are here for you to download and have a look at, including those Kahoot quizzes as well. Um, and I certainly have my intention is to write so at least three more big modules um, around this, around shapes, uh, choices and gaming in uh, all with this um, this approach of, of looking at multiple ways of doing this. Um, I'm very, very open to any um, improvements. If you see anything that's incorrect in things, tell me. 
Um, if I put the wrong link on something, email me, uh, say, I'm, I'm, I really appreciate that. If you I have a few teachers who are wonderful at providing feedback, they literally just send me, um, oh, Phil, we can do this. Um, we did this with it, it worked really well, but that didn't work. Or, uh, I, I really appreciate that. So if any of you want to send me the feedback, that's great. And of course, if you do some of these modules and fill in a Kahoot, uh, obviously, uh, take the names of your children out of the Kahoot. Ask your head teacher if it's OK to email it to me once you've anonymized it. But that will be really useful because that gives us more information about, um, you know, what 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 methods are e enabling children to get the most thinking and understanding from from their programming. Um, and I hope it's useful and that you really I enjoy doing some things with this. Let's just go and open one. Briefly, you can see a bit of planning here, okay, and some of it sort of all set out for you to, to, to use. Anyway, thanks very much for listening.